So I've spent a pretty generous amount of time with the game and I'd like to gladly report that Oddworld Soulstorm is wonderful. But it is not a great game. Mostly because of the unrealized potential which is boosted by an overwhelming infusion of nostalgia. The power Soulstorm could have wielded would have been extraordinary, but somewhere down the line, it fails to utilize all that nostalgia to its benefit. This is Button Smash with our review. Let's start with the visuals first. The overall atmosphere of Oddworld Soulstorm is pretty grim and dark, paying a perfect homage to the old game. This atmosphere is almost countered by the game world of Soulstorm which is cartoony and clumsy. It tries to be serious but can't because of the lore of the world and tries to stick to its roots, which makes it a very unique genre of gameplay. And it feels oddly good. The style is 2.9D, adopted by many recent 2D side-scrollers. It's in the forefront, a regular 2D side-scroller set in a very 3D world where the character can only move two ways, forward or backward. Well, up and down as well, but you know what I mean. This linear 2D is wrapped around some gorgeous 3D scenery which almost always serves only as a visual element. I say almost because there are certain places where these distant set pieces are not interactable by Ape, the main character, but he can take damage from these visual elements in the form of bullets or lasers or homing missiles. The entire world looks like a steampunk derivative and it works well in its favor. Abe is modeled exactly like his 1997 version and likewise his animations. They are exactly alike in the way he rolls, jumps, runs and funnily the way he dies as well. The cinematic cutscenes are also animated in a way that perfectly provides homage to the classic. I'm saying this because with all the technology available, they could have made this a lot different from what it is and completely lost the plot with respect to keeping the original roots intact. But they did not. They stuck to giving Abe and the inhabitants of Oddworld the look they deserve. And a big thumbs up for that. Abe, this time, is blessed with an arsenal of items and all these are implemented well with their separate animations. The tiny little attention to detail in the environment is also appreciated. The smoke in a smoke whale looks suspiciously clear even when there are enemies that pass through the vapor. The particle effects for fire look perfect and you can almost feel the heat from the fire, compounded by the fact that Abe takes barely two ticks of fire damage to die. The appendages flooping from the mouth of slakes feel much more disgusting now than they did in the classic. And Moloch, wow, he looks uncomfortably detailed. All in all, the visuals do what it is exactly supposed to do. Implement a grim, new looking world while maintaining the classic feel of the original. Now let's move on to the audio. Sound remains an important focus for games that rely on stealth mechanics, but the cues here are more visual than to do with sound. It does the same thing as the visuals, maintain integrity and feel of the original game. As I've already stated that the entire premise of the game is a very serious situation in a sort of a cartoony world, the sounds do perfect justice. For example, a jolt of electricity will shock Abe, who will let out a very funny scream. A mind-possessed enemy could be blown to bits with the sounds of his body chunks thudding on the floor, ripe with squirting blood sounds. Also, Abe is kind of an ass. He chuckles most of the times he manages to outsmart an enemy whenever he's either blowing them to smithereens or possessing their minds and making them do untoward things. Then there are these particularly hilarious moments if you can manage to trap an enemy behind some flames, resulting in him calling out to his mommy in an emotional reference to their childhood. Hilarious. Gunshots sound amazing though, so do laser track beams. Explosions and big crashes are also very elaborate and go hand in hand with the grandeur of the entire setting. The audio in this one particular level in a train is a joy to behold. A sudden train passing by can really spook you with its horn if you're not really paying attention. The cogs and wheels in machinery, the fizzing of steam, the zap of an electric shock all go perfectly with the visuals. The voice acting is kinda great as well. And if you're a fan of the original and know how the inhabitants of Oddworld speak, you know it hits the spot. Now be warned, it can come across as cringy to someone who's new to the game and is devoid of all that nostalgic goodness. The goodness in voice acting is perhaps something reserved for the vintage Oddworld fans. The one minor problem I kinda came across was how the audio in certain sections were not loud enough but exploded in certain others. A cutscene may play in a very low volume forcing you to turn the dials up but the next instant would transition into gameplay with an explosion and nearly take your ears out. Setting the SFX levels to low made an instant difference, but the default audio settings shouldn't ideally have such problems. All in all though, the audio is pretty decent and does a very good job in keeping you hooked. So let's now move to the heart of the game, the gameplay. The platforming stealth goodness that we all remember from our childhood days is back with a bang. 
Sharing platforming similarities with the games of old such as the original Prince of Persia, Oddworld stood out for its own style of stealth gameplay. It is not a game where you are handed out multiple overpowered weapons and you go around blasting every little enemy in sight. It is in fact a screen by screen slide where every slide is a stealth sequence, a puzzle in a way. You are given hints at the beginning of each level describing the kind of items you might come across and how to use these items to move ahead. For example, you will have to chant to use your magical powers to ring a bell which opens up a closed door or using an explosive can of pop fizz with a mint to blow up certain obstacles. Everything is obvious in the first two sequences of a level but they become increasingly challenging as you move on to the end of the level. And when I mean challenging, I mean really really challenging. You get a checkpoint save every time you enter a puzzle sequence and you'll be thanking your stars for the same because it can get pretty frustrating in some instances. For example, you'll need to move to an exit point through a series of obstacles and you might pick up certain inventory items along the way. The animation of picking up these items takes some time though, a small amount of time but very significant if you have to repeat it over and over again. So as I was saying, suppose you are about to reach an exit point and you flick your left thumbstick on your controller a bit too much resulting in Ape falling down right in front of a slick and ultimately dying. You have to repeat the whole thing again. Now I know this was exactly the same in the original as well but maybe we are not used to the old style anymore. It feels like the good old days when games were a challenge and not handheld like most games are these days. And for this very reason, some of the challenges seem difficult. I am very impressed with the level of difficulty in the game, don't get me wrong. But please let the items you collect stay in your inventory. Don't make me go over again and again to pick up the items. This is almost souls like in this regard but mistakes due to poor controls shouldn't really make us pay for it as much. A case in point is the fact that I've still not figured out how to get down from a platform without fumbling a couple of times by flicking the thumbstick left or right. And with the slightest sound alerting an enemy slick, this turns out to be a bigger problem than anticipated. Aiming also is a bit clunky especially when there's two or three separate actions that are required to be performed in a timed puzzle event. What stands out though is that every puzzle sequence seems to be well thought out. You will be forced to stop and think most of the times cause trial and error will get you nowhere. Successfully finishing a puzzle sequence, saving a good amount of mudokens can give you a serious dopamine rush, especially if you are a completionist. Most of the gameplay is excellent and true to its former self. The stealth element gameplay making Abe move from a steam vent to another is as good as it can get. Rescuing enslaved mudokens is another gameplay element altogether. The cute little noises they make when freed is so rewarding, but it is a task to get them to follow you though. Dear god, the amount of times they have died because of dumb AI behavior is ridiculous. They will perform the most silliest of actions when all you want them to do is follow you. If you want them to hide along with you, one of them will randomly just decide not to and die in the process. Now you can move ahead with having them die but you need to save a minimum amount of mudokens in order to get a good ending. Yes, you heard that right. There are multiple endings which is pleasantly surprising comparing to today's gaming standards but it forces you to be a completionist of sorts to get the good ending and has you pulling your hair out most of the time because of silly AI. This rinse and repeat formula makes the game length pretty long depending on your platforming skills and again as mentioned earlier if you are a completionist consider yourself engaged for a good week or so. There are also some unique set piece sequences where you basically have to outrun a series of bullets or some laser targeted weapons. All you have to do here is run. What manages to hit you mostly depends on your luck. You can kind of predict where a projectile might end up but it almost always is not an absolute location. Also, a middle game boss mission involving a mech robot was incredibly broken at the time of this review. The tracked missiles would do no damage in the opening 10 or 15 seconds, almost presenting you with a god mode like ability enabling you to make short work of a mech monster. Very strange for a crucial boss fight to have these sort of bugs. Abe would also randomly freeze at times forcing you to do a quick restart of the checkpoint. Now a word of caution here. When you quick restart, please make sure that you are restarting the checkpoint and not the entire level as I did a couple of times and found out the hard way. Also, squeeze between levels are some seriously long unskippable cutscenes with some pretty mediocre voice acting sequences. The problem is not with the voice acting in itself but the fact that there is significant delay between the delivery of two separate lines which makes it sound pretty bad. You can easily overlook these though cause you only have to sit through them once and they won't bother you once you cross the checkpoint. To kind of round it up. The gameplay is a challenge but once you get used to it, it is as rewarding as some of the most challenging games out there. So to summarize, the pros include good visual design which stays true to its original roots, clever and well thought out puzzles, challenging platforming sections which are an absolute joy and good sound design. On the other hand, the cons, horrible AI including enemy as well as friendly AI, some serious game breaking bugs 
and certain frustrating controls. Oddworld Soulstorm is a perfect homage to Abe and his world of Modokans. It is a delight for people who've played the original and if not as compelling, a surprisingly decent experience for newcomers to this genre of gameplay. Oh.